my name is Ryan Turner, and I'm with the University of Colorado Anschutz Medical Campus. I'm pleased to talk to you about our project, Structured Reporting for Findings of Spontaneous Intracranial Hypotension on Brain MRI. Many domains in radiology have benefited from implementation of structured reporting. We noticed that there was variability in reports evaluating for SIH, which can lead to patients being mischaracterized, which can complicate care. We decided to implement standardized templates for brain MRI reports evaluating for SIH and attempted to quantify the degree to which this implementation impacted reporting. Spontaneous intracranial hypotension, SIH, is a disorder that is caused by leakage of CSF. This could be through a dural defect, CSF venous fistula, or ruptured nerve root. To review imaging findings that can help evaluate SIH, in image A, it shows normal appearance of supracellar distance shown by the red marker, memlopontine distance by the yellow marker, and prepontine cistern by the blue marker. In image B, it shows a patient with suspected SIH. The presence of subdural collection indicated by the solid arrows and pachymeningeal enhancement by the dashed arrows. Image C shows an abnormally engorged transverse sinus with an upward convex superior margin, and image D shows normal flat appearance of the transverse sinus. The burn score is a set of criteria that was developed using these findings. They found that the burn score demonstrated good discriminative power in the assessment of CSF leaks in SIH. As you can see in the table here, major criteria are awarded two points and minor criteria one point. When using the burn score for assessment, a low probability is a score of less than or equal to two, intermediate is three to four, and high probability is a score of five or greater. The burn score helps to quantify the overall presentation even when it is not obvious. Here's the template that was introduced for our study, which is based on the burn score. Other than being provided a reference to the paper from which the template was derived, radiologists received no formal training in the application of the score. The score frames the interpretation in terms of probabilities instead of absolutes and provides a guide to classify this probability more objectively. Findings of SIH can be very subtle, which can ultimately lead to missed or misdiagnosis. Image one shows an obvious example of SIH, but there are also less obvious subtle presentations like image two. This shows findings of pituitary engorgement and mamelopontine effacement, which may be missed if not specifically assessed. Following implementation of the template, consecutive cases were collected. Reports were queried for orthostatic headache, CSF leak, and intracranial hypotension. The cases were read by a blinded neuroradiologist with advanced experience in SIH who assigned a burn score. The original reports were analyzed as to whether or not the impression indicated high, intermediate, or low probability for SIH and the findings were compared for concordance, followed by a secondary analysis for those who had further workup. Here's an example. On the left of the table, it shows how the burn score from the blinded reader was noted, followed by the impression from the original read, and then an assessment of the concordance. Example one shows a concordant result with a high probability burn score by the blinded read and an original read indicating a differential diagnosis that includes SIH. Example two shows a discordant result with a high probability burn score and an original read that indicated no evidence of SIH. A total of 50 brain MRI reports were scrutinized. 18 used the template and 32 did not. The proportion of discordance between the original read and the blinded read was greater when the template was not used versus when it was used. 44% versus 17% for a P that equals 0.05. Additionally, we looked at the most commonly missed findings among discordant reports, and they were quantitative in nature and included effacement of prepontine cistern distance, supracellar cistern distance, and mamlopontine interval, indicated by the blue, red, and yellow markers. They were then followed by the qualitative component of venous engorgement in image C indicated by the white arrow. In a sub-analysis, 10 patients underwent dynamic myelography, five of whom had a CSF leak or fistula found and five who did not. The mean burn score was higher in the patients with a positive finding at 6.6 .6 versus those without at 2.2, resulting in a P that equals 0.01. Our results suggest that the use of a standardized reporting template based on the burn score for brain MRI examinations improved detection of SIH findings and consequently decreased false negatives. This is a positive for radiologists because it takes the onus off them in terms of categorizing a single finding, and most importantly, it improves patient care. Thank you for your attention, and for more details and analysis, please check out our article in AJR, Structured Reporting for Findings of Spontaneous Intracranial Hypotension on Brain MRI.